These are eastern black-nosed dace. They're a type of minnow, and they're fairly common in small upland streams throughout the northeastern United States and Canada. They prefer small rocky streams where there's a steady current and a stream bed made up of large rocks, gravel, and sand. They grow to a length of about two or three inches, and they're often found in the same cool water streams as brook trout. Black-nosed dace are constantly on the move looking for food, and hungry schools of them form as they race around me to investigate any disturbance that I make on the bottom of the stream, because they know that my movements amongst the rocks could have exposed tiny invertebrates or eggs, so there might be some food in the water. And these little fish have quite an appetite, and they'll eat just about anything, from tiny aquatic insects and their larvae, to fish eggs, bits of algae, and small worms. In captivity, they're easy to feed and will eagerly take most types of prepared foods, such as fish flakes and fish pellets. So for those of you interested in keeping native fish, these black-nosed dace would be a great species to start with. They're a tough little fish, and you could keep a group of six to ten of them in a properly maintained 20-gallon long tank. And with an even larger setup, such as a 40-gallon breeder tank, you could also add some tessellated darters into the mix, because both species would be happy in the same stream setup using sand, gravel, and a rock substrate. These fish do prefer cool water, so there's no need to provide them with a heater, but they do need to have a bit of a current to keep them happy and healthy. And this water movement is especially important in the hot summer months when the warm water carries less oxygen. It's also important to provide them with a tight-fitting cover for the tank, because these little fish will jump. So it's a good idea to cover any openings around the top of the aquarium. And this is especially helpful around hang-on-back filters, because these black-nosed dace will sometimes try to follow the current upstream and into the filter. Nonetheless, black-nosed dace are hyper when it comes to feeding time, so if you're keeping them in a community tank, then you'll want to make sure that the other, slower-moving fish in the tank are getting their fair share of the food. For instance, tessellated darters might not be able to get enough food in a tank with these dace, so you may need to target feed the slower-moving species just to be sure that they're getting enough to eat, because these fish move fast when there's food in the water. In the wild, black-nosed dace are eaten by larger fish, such as brown trout, brook trout, and rainbow trout, so they tend to get very nervous and shy around bigger fish. But other than that, they're pretty simple fish to keep. They're hardy, they're easy to feed, and they're active, so they can be fun to watch. Here they've found what appears to be part of a cricket or a dragonfly nymph. And, like hungry sharks in a feeding frenzy, they attack this meaty treat and tear it into bits, even though these little fish don't have any teeth in either jaw. And if you look closely, you can see that a few of these fish have an orange coloration along the side of the body, as well as on the pectoral fins. Those fish are the sexually mature males who are getting ready to spawn, and we'll take a look at that in just a moment. In the spring, when the temperature of the water rises above 60 degrees Fahrenheit, male black-nosed dace will develop a bit more color and start courting the females, which consists of the male relentlessly chasing the female until she decides that it's the right spot to lay her eggs. Then she embraces the male and they spawn. And the chase is on, but it's not easy trying to keep up with these little fish as they race around the river.
The females don't make it easy for the males, so there's a lot of excitement at this time of year as they chase each other in and out of these rocks looking for the perfect place to drop the eggs. Now, keep your eyes on these two fish right here. At the moment, they're spawning, but watch what happens when they're done. Now, it looks as if the female has been trapped in the rocks by the male. She's really deep down in there, too, and he's very persistent, so he's not giving her any room to make her escape. It's hard to see on film, but she's really managed to wedge herself down in there so tight that it's very difficult for her to move at all. At this point, I decided to help by moving the rocks, but in retrospect, I should have kept filming and waited to see what would happen. Apparently, these fish will spawn in the aquarium on a gravel substrate, but in order to trigger spawning, they'll first need to go through a cooling down period where the water temperature drops and there's a decrease in the length of time that the lights are left on each day. And these changes are meant to simulate the winter. The cooling down period is done for two to three months, and then the water in the breeding tank is gradually warmed up to between 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And this, along with the increase in the length of the photo period, should trigger them to spawn. After spawning, no parental care is offered, and the adults will eat their own eggs if they can find them. So if you intend on breeding these fish, you'll need to separate the adults from their eggs soon after spawning. You can get them to spawn in breeding baskets using gravel or marbles so that the eggs drop down out of reach where the adults can't reach them. The eggs will hatch in about a week, depending on oxygen levels and water temperature. Feed the babies the smallest food that you can at first, beginning with infusoria followed up by newly hatched baby brine shrimp and microworms. But I don't know. Breeding these particular fish seems like a lot of work, and I'm quite content leaving them in the river where they'll continue to reproduce each spring without any help from me. But, like I said before, if you're interested in keeping native fish, then the black-nosed dace would be a great place to start. And there you go, my friends. That brings us to the end of our journey into the hidden world of another amazing fish. Hopefully, you've enjoyed the trip, and you'll consider checking out some of my other videos as well. Thanks for watching, and have a beautiful day.